Welcome to the channel. This is part two of our installation series for this EG4 12 kPV and Power Pro battery. In this video, we will be doing all the wiring and programming for our system. This system is for a friend's house, and the way this system is going to work is we have a manual transfer switch to a critical loads panel. Let me first talk about these two amazing pieces of equipment, and then we will get to the wiring and programming. If you haven't seen the first video on how to install this, please click this link at the top of the screen. I'm excited to showcase yet another option for you for your home solar solutions. This inverter is a hybrid inverter, which means it can operate in off-grid mode or it can also operate grid-tied and sell back to the grid. So you can program it to backfeed the grid and if you have an agreement with your power company, sell power back to them. This 12K PV accepts 12,000 watts of solar coming into it on two different MPPTs with two different trackers each. This is a split phase inverter, which means it does 120 and 240. So it has two hots, L1 and L2. And each of those legs can do 4,000 watts for a total of 8,000 watts of usable power for your house. Now you're saying, wait a minute, you've got 12,000 watts of PV coming in or thereabouts, and you can only use 8,000 watts? Well, yes and no. This is unique in that you can use those 8,000 watts for the loads in your house. It can output that. That extra 4,000 watts can be put into charging the battery. So if you're running this on a day that's got full sun, but you've just got massive loads in the house and you're maxing those out, it's still charging the battery. Unlike some other inverters where if you're maxing out your 8,000, nothing is charging the battery. So the battery is staying uh, uncharged for that whole day until you turn your loads down. But if you've got something critical going on where you need to use that power, then this will still charge the battery. It's very cool. Another interesting feature about the 12K PV is that you can surge this over your 8,000 watts. So actually up to 8,800 watts for 12 entire minutes. That is, most inverters will not do that. They'll surge for a short period of time, maybe one minute, maybe two minutes, maybe even 30 seconds, depending on how big that surge is. But if you go just up to 8,800 watts, this will last for 12 minutes with that extra surge in there. So if you've got a well pump that's really running and it's surging up above that 8,000, don't worry about it, you're gonna be good. And if you absolutely need it for a giant project, you can parallel up to 10 of these things together. If you're interested in any of these products, I have them linked in the video description below. I also have linked a $50 coupon code for you. Now let's talk about this indoor Power Pro battery, which I'm absolutely loving already for a few reasons. All right, check this out. This is the best feature of this Power Pro battery, which is a 14.8 kilowatt hour battery, and that is its depth. It is less than 11 inches off the wall. So the advantage of this is space, especially in this very small room that my friend had available for his system. This is the only spot in the house for this. If you've seen my other videos, I have the EG4 LL server rack batteries, which I absolutely love. However, they take up a lot of space, especially when you put them in the metal cabinets that uh, you really should have if you do that type of installation. With my EG4 LL batteries and the entire cabinet, it's about 27 inches square, and that is a lot of space to take up. This is only 11 inches deep, and it fits right under the inverter. So this is very close to equaling three of the EG4 LL server rack style batteries. This is 14.3 kilowatt hours, and three of the LLs would be 15.3 kilowatt hours. However, another cool thing, this is about $600 less than getting three EG4 LLs or LLS, which is the new one, and a cabinet for them. And there's just a one kilowatt hour difference between the two. So what they've done with this battery too is made it a lot easier to connect it to your inverters. We've got a special type connector here which just snaps on to the lugs on the top of the battery. Here's a huge advantage of this, and I did a video on this in the past, is when you have multiple batteries like I do in my installation at home, 
What can happen between the batteries and the BMSs between the batteries is that their state of charge can start to drift from one another. Now, I don't have any data that says that paralleling multiple of these indoor wall mounts together will start to throw their state of charges off between them. But I can tell you from experience that that happens all the time with many, many different server X style batteries. And that's even if they have communications between the batteries themselves and the inverter. So I am very excited about these. Okay, let's bring you in here and show you what I've done so far. We have our conduit coming in from our solar panels outside. We've got our electrical grounding conductor and our one string of panels. They are coming up through the conduit box and into the bottom of the inverter. We've got our electrical grounding conductor to the grounding bar and we have got our PV input. So we've got one and two strings for the first MPPT and we've got two strings for the second MPPT. These are unique connections. You place a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, inside this top portion here and push down. And that gives you the, the ability to put the wire right in, you let it go, check it by pulling on it, and that is it. Of course, positive to positive, negative to negative. Down here, we have a grounding conductor from our battery up to the grounding bar in the bottom of the inverter. I'll show you that all that will continue to go through the system back to the main panel in the house. Right beside it right here, I have our ground neutral leg one and leg two, or line one, line two, or hot one and hot two, however you say it, for the inverter. So we've got our two lines here, line one and line two, and we are gonna connect them up to this load breaker right here. And then of course, our ground comes to our ground bar, and our neutral comes to our neutral bar. Okay, here we go, we've got it connected. We've got our load connected. Our neutral is to our neutral bus in the back. We've got line one and line two, and our ground is to the ground. The PV wires are in. And you can see I'm leaving a lot of extra wire here. Make sure you leave loops for your wire, just in case you need some extra wire. It's always good to do this. We're following this flexible conduit up from the inverter into our manual transfer switch. So this switch is off when it's in the middle. When I switch it up like this, it's going to engage the top and that's going to engage the solar inverter. All the wiring to my critical loads panel is going to come off the middle here. So I'm going to black to black and then down to our critical loads panel, red to red, down the same, and the same with the white neutral wire. So you see that leaves me this open bottom here and what that is going to do is bring power in to our new circuits from our main service panel in the house, which is through the wall on that side. We're gonna wire it the same, black to black, red to red, and white to white. So if we want power on to our entire panel, including our critical loads that are now down in the box below me, we're gonna be down here. That's gonna supply power to everything in the house. Then if I come up here, we've got a power outage. I just switch it up. We've got solar coming in and that runs only directly down to our critical loads panel, powering those critical loads. Now let's get our battery cables installed. The first thing I'm gonna do is run them up through the conduit box and connect them to the battery lugs up in the inverter. Now this is very fine stranded wire. You might want a ferrule on here, but I don't have any this big. So you're gonna to wanna to be very, very careful inserting these into those lugs. These are two watt battery cables. And what's really nice is they come with the battery. You don't have to run out and buy extra battery cables for this system. Make sure you connect these ends to the inverter before connecting it to the battery. So after just mentioning that, I can tell you right away, you're going to want to buy ferrules for this. This is extremely difficult to get up in here and get all these fine stranded wires inside this lug. I was able to do it, but you can't get your fingers in here or you know it's very, very tight. So that is a huge challenge. These just are protected and that's awesome, but they're just not big enough. What I did when I push these in was I took the screw all the way out and I did the best I could and then I massaged it in with just a flathead screwdriver, massaged in all the little wires because they will not all pop in there. Here we go, now we can connect the cables. We're just gonna take the cap off of one of the connections here and we're just gonna push it on. And it's gonna click in. 
Okay, the next thing to do is connect our battery communications cable. This comes with your inverter. It's the orange cable. So we're going to go in the left port, the far left port on the top of your battery, and then we're going to come up to this top left port. I'll show you when it's done. So on the top of the battery, we are in the left port, and we want to make sure that this dip switch on the left side, this number one dip switch is down and all the rest are up. And then up here, we are in the top left port. That's all for this. So now it's on to the transfer switch, the critical loads panel, and our main panel. We can button this up because we're done here. All right, check it out. We are up and running. Batteries on, inverters on, everything's buttoned up. You can see our manual transfer switch. We've got our grid wired into the bottom and our solar on the top. To open it, you have to go and shut off your critical load circuits that we have down there. Open it up, we've got everything wired in. We've got solar on the top, white to white, red to red, black to black, of course. And the grid is into the bottom. So when we close this and engage this down, it engages that and powers our panel down here. Inside the panel, we've only got two circuits run. We have to run the other ones, but you get the idea. So we have one 15 amp circuit here and one 20 amp circuit here run over to our main panel and I'll show you what we did over there. And then of course we have our panel powered here at the top on either side with leg one and leg two. Our neutrals on this side and our grounds are on this side. This is unbonded because we have a bond out at the panel at the power pole in this particular instance. Here we are in the closet with our main panel and we've got all, all of our wires coming through the conduit and we have our breaker here, this 50 amp breaker, which powers the critical loads panel, that's run through with six gauge THHN. Of course, neutrals on the neutral bar. We've got green over here on the grounding bar. This panel is also unbonded because I mentioned that we've got a panel out at the power pole. Then the two circuits that we moved over, one is up here, this 20 amp right here that is turned off, and one is this 15 amp that's turned off right here. What we did was we took the hot out of the end of this and married it and put a wire nut onto our wire that runs through to our critical loads panel to the other breaker. So this breaker is no longer functioning here and neither is this one. This is a super clean installation. I really like it. And I'm going to show you some of the settings right now, but all of the settings are going to be specific to your application. So I will just go over a few basics for our setup which is the off-grid setup. Our first setting that we need to do, we're gonna come over here to settings. We're gonna to go to advanced and scroll down right here. And we're gonna see up here at the top grid frequency. Here in the United States, we have 60 Hertz on our grid frequency. So we need to change that. Okay, we've got a notice on here and I'm gonna to try to clear this by the settings. And we're gonna go through to the settings and you need to be in standby mode. So make sure you click this right here for standby mode while you're changing all of these. First thing we're gonna go down to is advanced and we're gonna go to the PV input, which is right here. Of course, we gotta enter our password and we're gonna come and scroll down. PV1, PV2, PV3 independent, that's our setting. The settings are on pages 11 through 14 on the quick start manual. Step two, I'm gonna find grid cell back and I'm going to disable that. I don't wanna click export to grid. We've got off grid output. If you wanna set how everything discharges, you can do it under discharge. Your charging parameters are of course under charge. We're using state of charge on everything. And as you can see, when I change just those few settings, the way we have things set up, our fault cleared and we are back to normal. Well, that's it friends. Just a few simple settings for us for the off grid mode. Each one of you will do different settings for whatever your setup is. And that's how you connect this to a simple critical loads panel. You can move as many circuits as you want from your main over to your critical loads, whatever your inverter will handle, whatever you want to use. And we just simply switch everything between the grid and solar with the manual transfer switch and that's it. Now you can get into automatic transfer switches and things like that if you want or special transfer switches that switch specific circuits. It's all up to you on how you want to wire it. But for us in this specific application, this was the simplest and easiest way to do it. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment section below.
Now go check out this series of videos right here, which is our videos on how to install a Victron system. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time.